In this first video, we're going to cover some basics to make sure we're all on the same page. Setting up the CRM correctly up front will make things easier once we start integrating it with other Zoho apps. So let's go to the settings. In personal settings, you can customize your information. Each user has its own personal info, so it is important that they add it here. This info can be used later on in automations and workflows. You as the admin should also update the company information. It can also be used in workflows. On this page, we can see currencies. If you don't use multiple currencies, do not turn this feature on. It cannot be disabled and it will add many fields and modules that you're not going to use. On the users tab, you will see all the CRM users. You can modify their information here as well as assign roles and profiles. Under security control, we can add or remove profiles and roles. A profile determines what the user can do in the CRM, like view modules and add records. We have two by default, but you can create more. Let's open the standard profile. Here you can customize it. And there are a lot of options. Okay, let's go back. Roles determine what data a user can see. It is based on hierarchy. By default, a manager will be able to see records that a sales rep owns, but not the other way around. You can also configure data sharing in a more granular way in the data sharing settings tab. Something I always recommend is to connect your email to your CRM. This will sync your emails with the contacts you have in the CRM. Here we have all the native email integrations, but you can choose other mail for other email providers. Keep in mind that if you're using Zoho Mail, you still have to connect your account. When you set up this integration, you will be able to choose how you want to share your emails. On the email sharing tab, you will be able to configure the email sharing settings for all users. Next, we have organization emails. These are emails that can be used by multiple users in your organization. For example, here we have info at bloomgo.co. The first step is to create an email in your email provider. Then you have to add it to Zoho CRM and verify it. If you're planning to send emails from the CRM using your direct email or an organization email, it is important that you verify your domain. This is done on the email daily variability tab. We have a YouTube video that we will include in the description that goes over how to add the SPF and DKAM records to your domain. Let's go back to the email configuration. In this section, we can choose our default email address. It can be our own or an organization email. And below, you can set up signatures for your different email addresses. If you want to sync contact, Google and Microsoft have native support. Under Marketplace, you will find Google. After authentication, you will be able to configure what contacts you want to sync. Same for Microsoft. Just enable the contacts integration here. If you use Zoho Mail, you have to use the CRM widget in Zoho Mail, but it is not a two-way integration. You can access your CRM contacts from Mail. Another integration you can set up is the calendar integration. We already have the Microsoft Calendar synced. Going back to the Google tab, you can find Calendar up top where you can set up the sync. For Zoho, you have to set up the sync from Zoho Calendar. You can also connect your telephone provider with the CRM if the integration already exists. You have to set this up in the Zoho One admin panel, but then you can access it from the CRM and many other Zoho apps. One of the most popular voice over IP providers is Ring Central, but Zoho works with many of them. They even have their own called Zoho Voice. 